you're listening to the Journaling with PT podcast. I am your host, artist PT Russell. Season one is coming to a close and there are a few more entries left before I take a hiatus. We're going to take a hiatus and then we will return with the season two. It has been a glorious ride, to say the least. I've learned so much and all of the returning listeners, I hope that you have had a great experience as well. Learning from all of the wonderfully talented individuals, the guests who came on and shared and gave of themselves so generously. I truly appreciate that. We all do. Today, I have a recording from March of 2024. I had some sort of viral uh, thing on my bob. <laughs> Not sure what it was, but it left me with a little mild laryngitis. And so bear that in mind when listening to this particular entry. I wasn't going to actually share it, but I thought, you know what? This young man came on, this very gifted and talented young man, and gave of his time and shared his space, and I truly appreciate that. And I would be doing him an injustice by not posting this wonderful conversation. His name is Daniel Maluka. So stay tuned for that. Thank you. You're listening to Journaling with PT. I am your host, artist PT Russell. This is a podcast that highlights creative voices and emerging artists from all over the world. Please stay tuned for a conversation about art, poetry, with the talented Mr. Daniel Maluka. Hello, everyone. Today I have a wonderful artist for you. (laughs) His name is Daniel Maluka, and he is a visual artist and an author and also a graduate of Toronto Metropolitan University. Daniel, welcome. Thank you. Thank you, PT. Thanks for the introduction. Really, really excited to be here. Great. And uh, how is the, the, the warming, the thawing working for you? I will say my mood has definitely increased now <laughs> that the sun has returned. Um, mm-hmm. I think someone said that all of us here in Canada, we we suffer from a vitamin D deficiency. And I think it's totally mm-hmm. true, right? It's um, It was really dark and really gloomy for a long time, but I'm glad that we're now uh, starting to, to see a bit of the sun. Yes, and I share your sentiments. It's uh, spring is here. The birds are chirping. Everyone's excited, including all of nature. (laughs) Yes. It's a a happy time and also a wonderful time for creating. Every time Mm -hmm. is a wonderful time Mm -hmm. for creating, but I find that I'm more productive. I don't know, just a different kind of energy in the warmer months. Mm -hmm. What do you say about that? Yeah, um, I would say that that's true. Mm. Um, you know the warmer the better I I don't know about you but I come from a place where it's warm I come from a line of people who are used to the warmth so I think it just it just agrees with me in almost every sense okay and where precisely are you from so I was born in South Africa I came to Toronto when I was just two years old okay in South Africa and uh, mm-hmm. what they speak English there and, and what, what other languages are spoken in South Africa? Yeah, there's a few, few languages there. There's Zulu, there's Kosa, there's 
Afrikaans. There's yeah, there's a few. There's a few tongues and dialects over there. Yeah. Oh, nice. And uh, share with us just a little bit about your introduction to the arts. Wow. Um, yeah. So for me, a hundred percent. I started drawing because of Dragon Ball Z. Mm. I know that the creator of Dragon Ball Z, Akira Toriyama, I think yesterday or two days ago, it was yesterday. announced that he has since yeah, passed away. Mm -hmm. um, it's a big loss for a lot of people in my age group, people of my background, people younger than me, older than me. He, he had, um, it was a bit of a generational influence like a multi-generational influence on a lot of creatives yes so um it was really really painful you know just to hear that he's he's no longer with us because one of the things that you'd always look forward to whenever there was a new video game he was working on or a new dragon ball z show or season you would always look forward to him sending in his designs for mm -hmm. the whoever was leading that project his character designs and the story notes he would send because just the way that he would draw, just his character designs, the way that he would use color, the detail, really, really beautiful. So um, I would say it was through Dragon Ball Z because I, I wanted to I wanted to draw the characters that I saw in Dragon Ball Z. Mm -hmm. But I realized it wasn't the characters and the colors that I was really, really interested in. It was more so about like the narratives, right? Because Dragon Ball Z, it's not like, typical like American cartoons where you have a 30 minute whatever whatever happens in that 30 minute episode and then it all goes back to normal and then each episode is like a new slate like 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 the status quo is the same Dragon Ball Z was serialized so the episodes would be connected one to the other to the other so you could have these long story arcs I realized that was what I wanted to replicate because when I was in elementary school middle school we were all really interested in the story arcs and what would happen next so i wanted to do that for myself to mm -hmm. like create something that my friends would be really really excited about i tried with comic books then i realized okay like comic books are probably my thing because you need to be able to draw a lot of things well you need to be able to draw the same thing over and over again right. and the frustration i had when i was younger with comic books was i realized you'll like do one page and people won't spend any time looking at the art in the panel they'll just go yes. to the next page because they want to read the story so it's just like this is not this is not my thing so in in taking middle school art high school arts and the public schools i went to i was exposed to artists like um salvador dali yes, uh, yes. picasso mm -hmm. francis bacon mm -hmm. goya you know um, yeah. Basquiat in yeah, being cool. exposed to those kinds of artists I realized okay you don't need to have words or a comic book to give someone a narrative in your artwork or to tell a story you yes. can tell a story in a one-off illustration or painting when you're using symbols or like even like things like as subtle as line weight right it can there's a lot that you can share in just a one-off illustration so I kind of like kept that in mind and that's that's sort of what got me on the path I'm on now, right? Like being inspired by those by those greats. Yeah, that's wonderful. That's a wonderful story. Thanks for sharing that because I have always admired uh, the Dragon Ball Z cartoons, uh, animation, however you want to put it. Mm -hmm. uh, just the colors, the energy, mm -hmm. lots of action. Yeah, uh, even in the expressions, yeah. you know what I mean? Like just the expressions, yeah. there's yeah. so much going on right there. Even the micro expressions, to yeah. be honest. And yeah. it's just a lot of fun. <laughs> just a lot of fun. You know, when they're like really like a kind of a powering up, <laughs> they're having yes. these long monologues yes. or, uh, or dialogues. Yes. Uh, lots of fun. And uh, so it was always, I mean, I'm not a fan fan, but I'm a fan of the art of yeah, Dragon Ball Z. That's uh, fair. Uh, and more, it's so mm -hmm. it's so influential, right? Absolutely. So I was surprised too to read of his passing. I was like, "Wow, this is," and he was relatively young, but left yeah. such an indelible impression on the world of art and and even cinema, film. I agree with of, you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think so, and that is um, 
Yeah, that's just wonderful. Do any of your like your cultural uh, persuasions at all inform or influence your art? Yeah, I would say mm-hmm. so. Mm-hmm. I would say so. And, I'm really, mm-hmm. I'm really um, interested in exploring this idea of like being a member of the diaspora, where it's like you're born in one place, you were raised in another place, you go back and you visit the place you were born in, you look like those people there, you can kind of understand the language, you can kind of speak the language, but you're kind of an outsider. Mm Because, like, your accent is not, like, totally, totally accurate. So it's just, like, you you feel homeless two ways, right? Canada, you know, it's my home. I grew up here. But, like, when I think of home, I think of South Africa. But then when I go to South Africa, I'm a bit of, like, the odd man out. And, like, you Mm -hmm. can kind of miss, kind of miss Canada, kind of miss Toronto. So Mm -hmm. I I like exploring that tension of being Mm -hmm. from one place and feeling like um, a stranger in a strange land in a place that is the place you're from and in both places. Mm-hmm. I have a series of works. It's called Me Versus Me. Yes. Um, that's a series of digital illustrations, a series of paintings. I've done four of them so far right. where I express a bit of that tension of like mm-hmm. knowing that there's a Western version of yourself and an African version of yourself yes. and how those two things can be in conflict at times. That is beautiful and very poetic. (laughs) Yeah, thank you. Yes, it is. It's beautiful. Just this, the marriage itself is beautiful between the cultures and and the way that you just somehow infuse that into your art. I've seen some of your pieces, um, not in person yet, but yet yet is uh, the key word, but they are beautiful and very very immersive. Um, Thank you. Thank you. Uh, yeah, I love your use of colors. Uh, are there particular colors or particular palette you're drawn to? Um, it's hard to say. I think mm. I think it really depends. You know, it really depends on the actual on the actual piece. Mm. I think that like ah, this is the thing. I don't even totally understand color myself. <laughs> Like a few years ago, I would only like draw in like black and white, but like, I guess I have a general sense of like what goes together or like if I want something to be a little bit more calming or if I want something to be a little bit more muted, like Mm. I can see now because I'm looking back on my Instagram, I can see some places where like I probably would have wanted a little bit more vibrancy, a little bit more variation. Mm-hmm. with some of the color on some things that I'm seeing now or like maybe like leading into harder shadows right? right like using color but also keeping in mind that the use of color can also be can also have harsh contrasts in it right I think that's something I have to get a little bit better at but um look at me mm-hmm. you know typical artist critiquing myself here but <laughs> As <usual>. no like <laughs> I, um, <laughs> I would say um I do like reds Mm-hmm. I do like different shades of reds. I do like a bit of blue. And pink. Pink is something, pink is a color that I've been using a lot more lately. I yes. really, really find it interesting. Like I did one, I did one illustration with digital painting called Vapor. Oh. It's of like, it's on a purple background. It has pink lines on They're it. They're my colors, man. That's my palette. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of money. Yeah. Let so. me let me send that to you because please do i think you might you might be interested in it mm-hmm. um but yeah i think after this podcast i'll, I'll go ahead and send it to you yeah just yes. like i don't know something about pinks yes. like dark pink and light blue light pink yeah. and dark blue something about that about those two bouncing off each other i find yes. interesting the thing that I do notice is that I'm not really, like, I don't really tend to use green. Mm. Like, like the only time I think I'm using green is if, like, I'm trying to denote nature or something. But I would say green is probably a color I don't tend to go to. Okay. And, like, I know that's more of, like, my own thing. I'm not really that into green as a color. Right. Like, I know green is life, green is nature, but 
I don't know what it is. It's never been a color that's like drawn me in, really. I'd say so. Mm-hmm. I'd say that that's you know, fair. pinks and blues and reds and um, even purple sometimes, yes. oranges. Yeah, I mm-hmm. think that those tend to be my my go to. Oh. Yeah, that's that's wonderful. And some very similar colors in my palette that continues to show up from time to time as well as the pinks and the purples. So that's very interesting. And how would you describe your art style if you were to give a description? Yeah, that's the thing, right? When you you have to apply for these shows and these grants and these calls for submission, they want you to be able to describe your work, right? Mm -hmm. um so uh lisa lisa she's uh, she's a curator on instagram i was lucky enough to be a part of a feedback session for this online show that she helped curate Mm. and i had given this write-up about my work and you know i i read it to her and all the other artists in the zoom call and she's just like because like i i wanted feedback Mm -hmm. she's like you know she's like you know that's great and everything but she's like someone who has never seen your work wouldn't know what to picture from that description. Mm. So that's something that I've tried to keep in mind moving forward because that's such a good point. Because mm-hmm. like you can describe stuff, but like you have to try and be as like visual with your description so that people can have a general idea of like what your work is. So with that in mind, I would say my work is abstract and surreal across various mediums i work with digital i work with like digital art tools acrylic watercolor charcoal pastel um oil or soft mm, oil oil pastels right but i have used soft but i do i do think i prefer the oils and my work tends to have like um contrasts Mm-hmm. either between stark contrast of black and white or like contrast between like opposing colors yeah. and usually there's like a uh, in my work there's there's usually like a lot of detail mm-hmm. so there's a lot of times when the viewer would have to look at it then come back and look at it again so it's like artwork that kind of keeps on giving to the viewer because the more you look the more you notice and the more you notice, maybe you can come out with different interpretations and such. So, um, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I would say that that's, that's the summation of my work, at this point in time, at least. Yeah, so I think that anyone who's listening in who hasn't seen your work yet, because this is audio, would have mm-hmm. a very good idea of what to expect. Perfect. And and where can they find you, by the way, if they wanted to see your work? Yeah, yeah, that's a very good question. So I'm at danielmaluka.net, D-A-N-I-E-L-M-A-L-U-K-A.net. I'm also on Instagram at what Daniel Drew. So it's W-H-A-T, my first name, D-A-N-I-E-L, and then D-R-E-W, what Daniel Drew. That's the website. That's the Instagram. Those are the best places to to take a look. Yeah. Yes, and I will have your information in the show's description for sure. Perfect. Wonderful. Uh, do you notice if there has been a reoccurring theme in your work? Yes, actually, mm-hmm. I have. And the funny thing is, it's not me who noticed it. Mm-hmm. Someone had to point it out to me someone who had seen my work over the years because sometimes I feel like as artists we can be too in it like we can be too in the like in the trees that we can't see the whole forest right true because you're there you're making it you're thinking about like these weird specific like things that are on your mind like for me I only started thinking about like bodies of work recently and drawing for a series recently before it would just be like just whatever random whim or sensation I have and just digging into that. But what my friend had said from seeing my work, she she had noticed that there was a big theme of the body in my work, mm. of the human form and gesture 
different positions of the body, she had said that, like, I seem to be interested in exploring that aspects of the body. There's, like, themes of, like, leaving your body, the body being broken down, parts of the body going missing, parts of yourself being multiplied, like, um, the body looking at itself, you, like, observing yourself outside of yourself. There's a lot of, like, body, out-of-body type stuff that mm-hmm. this friend of mine pointed out and I totally agreed. I'm like, yeah, that's that's really true. But if she had not pointed that out to me, I probably wouldn't have noticed. So I think that one of the reasons why I use the body so much is kind of like what I was saying back to like Goya and symbolism and all of that. I think yes. you can say a lot by what you don't include. Mm-hmm. Like if you draw the human figure and you remove the person's arms, I think that there's a point being made there about powerlessness, you know? That's like some of the things that I do. I'll like distort or break the body in order to make wider points. Mm -hmm. Um, Another theme of mine that I think has been pretty consistent is the theme of communication. I'm really, really obsessed with this idea of like perfect communication. If we found a way as human beings to communicate without words, right? Mm -hmm. Telepathically to where we can send our intention from one person to the other, Mm -hmm. directly sending your intention. I think that would solve a lot of problems in our world. I think nothing would be lost in translation because think of how many times, um, how many times you've had conflicts with somebody because something was misinterpreted. Yes. Because there was some sort of like misunderstanding and they took it not even in a way that you meant it, right. but like you said it, the damage has been done. Like it's out there. Imagine if you could just send your intention telepathically from one mind to the other and people can understand instantly where you're coming from. Yes. That's you, been a big theme of mine, I would say. Yeah. You said, imagine if you can do that. Suppose we can. Mm. <laughs> Mm. and that hasn't been explored suppose we can i mean like yeah you know the (laughs) the human mind has a lot of secrets so i wouldn't be surprised if in a few years there's some sort of realization that you know we've always been Mm -hmm. capable of that right that would shock me i think that we are spiritual beings yes i think there's a lot about ourselves we don't really realize yet so i wouldn't be shocked by that yeah, that's something to explore for sure. Mm-hmm. So, Daniel, you're also a writer. Yes. What have you written? Um, so, I've written a few short stories over the years. Wonderful. I think I've attempted eight. Mm. And there's only about three or two I would ever show someone to read. I find it quite hard, short stories. Short stories are, are very difficult. It's like you have to develop character have to move plot along, have to make the themes clear. Yes. Right? I feel like with, with, with short stories, there's so much that goes on at one time that you have to do. Yes. And it feels very mechanical to me. It feels hyper-structured. It feels like, I don't want to say this because I know authors are artists. But for me, when I sit down to write a story, Mm -hmm. it almost doesn't feel like an art. I see. It feels very, very mechanical and stiff. Versus poetry, when I write poetry, poetry feels very fluid and loose. And it feels a lot more like sketching. Okay. And and I really, really love that about poetry. So I've written a few poems over the years. A few have been published in print. A few have been published online. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you for that. Um, Yeah, it's just, I I see it going back to the communication thing. I see poetry as like another way to communicate. Like if I can't say something in my artwork, Mm -hmm. then I'll write a poem about it and vice versa. That's kind of how I see. um, That's kind of how I see the... uh, those those things working so um, I, had, with the, with the I have an idea but something for you you said yeah. that when you approach because I also write short stories I find it to be a very uh, 
uh, poetic. It can be a very poetic form. It depends on how it's written. Why not try to write your stories in kind of the same flow, ebb and flow that you would poetry? Have you tried you that? No, you know, I really should. I've thought mm. about that, but I have to have more mm. like reference material, like okay. someone who's done that really, really well that mm. I can read and have a better understanding of what that would look like and what that feels like. So if you have any recommendations, I would be more than more yes. than happy to maybe get them. If you have any authors who do that that you can recommend, because I well, want to do that. But... I mean, I do that, but I <laughs> but it's just something okay. that's not that's natural for me to to write in a I way. Uh, I think everyone approaches, like you said, their process differently, and for mm-hmm. me, sometimes it depends on how a story wants to be written. Um, mm-hmm. it sometimes it takes on its own life, right? And it just mm-hmm. is organic and just the way you would approach maybe an abstract piece, something that's very expressionistic. Sometimes where, the words where, flow where this like way. Yes. You give up the control. Yes. And you let it be what it wants to be. Yes. For whatever reason, I can do that in my artwork. I can't mm-hmm. do that when it comes to stories. Because it's like, I spent mm-hmm. like 15 pages building up this thing, <laughs> Right. Like I want it to be a certain way. I'm, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm not as like loose because then I'm thinking, oh my God, I spent all this time building mm-hmm. all this up mm-hmm. and I don't know where it's going. That is very anxiety inducing for me. Like that, that doesn't sound fun. <laughs> well, you don't have to know where it's going. Allow it yeah. to write itself. I mean, yeah. every story is different. Maybe like if you have a story and you're writing it, you just have like perhaps just a character in mind or just a feeling a th- of, you know, something that's very atmospheric and you just want to just describe what you're seeing and feeling. That's a part of it. Uh, you leave that alone for a while, you come back to it, you may be able to find another, you know, part of the story, a deeper layer, layer mm-hmm. later. So, um, yeah, just try every story is different. Every piece of art is different. Exactly. And sometimes when we approach a story like, okay, they should be written this way, that who says says who? Mm, mm, mm. <laughs> you are the author. You are the creator. Exactly. And it is your yeah. word. It can be. It can be whatever. But yeah, I, I'll have to. I'll have to sort that out in my mind how to get <laughs> over that because that's a genuine hang up. And honestly, mm. PT, I'm really thankful for this conversation okay. because you made me realize. Mm. that that loose giving up control aspect that I do in artwork can be Mm -hmm. replicated in writing. That's been a big thing I've been stuck on for years. Mm. And I think speaking to you has helped crystallize that for me. So I'm really, really appreciative. Now I know what to sort of drill into. I'm happy about that. And who are some of your favorite poets, by the way, and whose work that you admire? Mm -hmm. Sylvia Plath. In high school, mm. being exposed to her work made me go, okay. whoa, this is really, really powerful. Mm. Uh, um, um, Major Jackson, okay, being exposed to his work, I really enjoyed. Um, I think I think her name is Linda Hogan or Linda Horgan. Okay. I don't, I, I want to make sure that I, let me see. No worries. No yeah, Linda Hogan. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I really enjoy her. And like all of the all of the deep image poets, I really, really enjoy. I really like the poetry that can like sort of mm-hmm. give you really, really strong and specific images. So anything that the deep image poets do, um, I'm there for. As well as um, Denez Smith. I think they are incredible as um, as a poet. I did a poetry workshop recently, mm-hmm. and um, it was just something that like my friends are doing like for each other. It's like unpaid, but we're just that's like an artist skill share type thing. Mm-hmm. So uh, I did that recently, and I used the Denez Smith poem in that in that workshop to show an example of like incredible writing. I think the poem the, the poem was called The 17-Year-Old and the Gay Bar, something like that. If you put okay. that in and then you type in Denise Smith, I think it's going to come up. And the thing I love about that poem is just the 
the tension, right? Mm -hmm. That juxtaposition between very specific concrete details that we can relate to. Like, mm -hmm. I think there's a line about a 17 year old with a fake ID and the bouncer who knew, but let you in anyway. Mm -hmm. And then there's like another line that's really, really elevated and like surreal about like wanting to live on someone's tongue. So I love that, like that back and forth, that light and dark of the um, super concrete, super realistic and the hyper real, the, the like surreal, the like unreal that like you can use as yes. well. Beautiful. So yeah, I just yeah. love it and your use of words and everything. It's just absolutely wonderful. Thank you. <laughs> Before we wrap up, uh, what was the last influential book you read? Oh man, last influential book, hundred mm -hmm. percent for me. It was Pale Fire by oh. Vladimir Nobokov. I've read other books since then because I was stuck on it during lockdown. Then after lockdown, I came back to it and finished it. It was one of the hardest books I've ever, I've ever read. But the reason why, the reason why it was like, so, um, so influential for me was what Nobokov was doing like his prose, his level mm. of prose is an example of what we were talking about. We could, it could be really, really poetic at, time, while, at times while moving the plot forward, while developing dialogue, while doing this and while doing that. It was so striking. It was so well done that like when I had finished reading, I was just like, yeah, that's, that's probably some of the best writing I think I've ever been exposed to. So I would say that was quite influential because I would love to get like close to that or maybe even get halfway to that, mm -hmm. to what he was doing in that book. Wow, wonderful. Well, Daniel, we're at the end of our first, this first round <laughs> because okay. I want to have you back again. Amazing. Yes, you Amazing. said you were working on a book, right? Yes, yes. And, and how is that going? So um, it is, the book is called Unwashed. Mm -hmm. It's a collection of my poetry. It's coming out with my publisher this year in June. It's going really well. It's been a really, really great experience working with the publisher, like seeing how things work behind the scenes. Um, yeah, it's been, it, it's been really, really kind of like um, eye-opening because there's, there's a lot of very personal stuff in there, very personal stories, very personal info about there. And I feel like I didn't leave anything on the table for that book. Okay. So I'm really, really excited for when it's out and when I can start sharing it with the world. Wonderful. Well, whenever that is published and it's out there and you want to come back and perhaps do a little reading for us, that'd be great. Amazing. I would love that. Okay. So you can look forward to that. And hopefully by then, <laughs> I'll be up and going with the video. I wanted video today, but it didn't work out today. And That's my okay. voice is a little bit not quite itself. But I'm just grateful. It's such a pleasure to, to speak to you about your, your art, your beautiful art. You're a wonderful artist. Thank you Thank so much, you. Daniel. Thank you for your time. Thank you for pulling through. It was a, an amazing conversation. Thank you. All the best. Take care. Thank you for listening in to the Journaling with PT podcast and an enlightening conversation with artist, poet, writer, Daniel Maluka. His information is in the show notes. Check him out on all the social sites. Subscribe to ptrussell.com. Check me out there too as well. And stay tuned because there are two entries left. And these gentlemen have the most beautifully commanding voices I've heard. Yes. So stay tuned for that. Take good care of yourself. 
until next time.